I have a friend who plays Genshin. His account needs some work, but luckily he has 260 fragile resin saved up. He gave me 100% freedom to use it however I want to give him a complete account makeover. This is Roger. He's an IRL friend of mine and a very unique Genshin player. He has been playing since day one, plays almost every day, saves his primos like an absolute madman. But most importantly for today, he's a very casual player. Look, he's not super deep in the artifact farming, min maxing, meta build sauce, but he's looking to start, which is why we're here today to give Roger and his well loved but pretty mediocre characters a complete makeover. I have been given full reigns to use all of this fragile resin to make this account the best account it could possibly be. Do you think we can completely turn around an account with 260 fragile resin? Well, to start, we're gonna need a plan. Did you guys see the 76 million Mora? <laughs> I do not think we will be running out of Mora when we level up all these five-star artifacts. The first thing I did was refresh myself on what characters Roger has likes to use a lot and their current builds. Our dude's been running physical ka -ching. It's 2023? No, no more. That's actually a good piece. Oh, that's a pretty saucy piece too. Kokomi is the queen. She is literally C6. So if we wanna utilize Kokomi C6 to the best it can be, Ocean, Hude, Clam, strong box you may remember roger from an account review video we did where we actually pulled him a c6 kokomi all from primos he has saved for years of just welcome moon pretty much free to play anyway with his crazy primo gem saving habits he doesn't pull very much so he doesn't have a super wide plethora of different characters look at the limited five stars we've got nahita venti uh ayaka kokomi raiden and jongli that is literally it. But this actually makes our job easier. I deduced four of Roger's best teams, all with characters he enjoys using already to help us devise a plan. The teams were Ayaka Freeze, Raiden National, Kaching Aggravate, and Kokomi Hypercarry. These are all extremely meta viable teams that needed some work. And the teams can have different iterations of them used, mixing and matching supports between one another, making them all great investments. Characters like Sucrose, Fischl, Yelon, etc., can be used all over the place. So the plan was becoming clear. Farm a domain with two sets that are useful to Roger while strongboxing the weak pieces to another set he needs from a less efficient domain. Roger's Emblem of Sever Fate pieces are actually pretty decent so while it's the best set in the game and he has a lot of mlm of cyber fate users here it goes slightly down in priority at the moment this leads us to the elephant in the room a little self-report on where he is meta wise whoa no okay <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Kaching with the rise of Dendro in 3.0 skyrocketed up the tier list of viability, genuinely becoming a top tier damage dealer. And Roger loves Kaching. She's one of his highest invested units that he uses all the time. She's at Constellation 2. She has high talents. She's in the beautiful lantern right dress and is a physical build. Yeah, we need to fix that. It's 2023 to unlock Kaching's final form, her best builds. We've gotta use Electro Kaching. So here's the plan. We're gonna be farming the Gilded Dreams Deepwood Memories domain. Gilded Dreams is gonna help Kaching, Fischl, and Nahida first and foremost. It's gonna unlock Hyperbloom as an option once we get some good pieces. And it's just a godlike artifact set to have for so many different team comps. Deepwood Memories is gonna help Nahida, Hirata, Tainari, and it is just once again, another all around amazing artifact set, boosting up the damage of anything Dendro for the whole squad. So what is the strong box option we are starting with? Ocean Hued Clan. Roger has a C6 Kogmi he just pulled for, but he doesn't have a proper C6 certified build for her. Luckily, he's friends with one of the best Kogmi players and appreciators in the world, your boy. So our first goal, get multiple usable Gilded Deepwood builds while getting Kogmi a build of her own on Clam. And so began day one. You guys have been memeing about the Crystal Flies. It's time. 506 Crystal Cores, baby, we're good. All right, team, we're good. The first thing we did was create a team that could dominate this domain as fast as possible, and Roger's C2 Raiden natural team was uh, more than equipped for the job. So we got to farming. Something I forgot to mention. 
Roger actually had a lot of artifacts unleveled on his account that actually had a ton of potential. So during the stream, I was motivated to go through them and try to find some diamonds in the rough. I also leveled up some strong Beardus and Venner pieces that Roger left all dusty, like an EM Sands and a Circlet. They didn't have great subs, but luckily that is not a huge issue for Beardus and Venner supports. All right, back to Gilded Deepwood. I don't know if I've ever done that before. <laughs> the Gilded Dreams and Deepwood pieces were flowing in too with this ridiculously cracked double crit Dendro Goblet on Gilded. Ooh, baby, dude. That's a good one, boys. All crit. That's disgusting. Homies, you thought this was just farming? Look. We've got strong boxing to do, baby. Let's get this shit started. Roll one. Look at the goblets. Dendro, hydro, 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 hydro. I got so much. I got a lot of elements though. We ride. Roll it again. Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> this off piece is about to go crazy, dude. Crit rate, crit damage, max roll, four liner attack ER. Good piece. Yo, is this the new Maiden's Beloved or what? You're trolling. Hydro. Stop. Oh, look at that. HP, HP, attack EM. There we go. Now we're talking. Healing bonus, HP, REM. Oh, dude, Kokomi's ready. Oh my God. The strong box for Kokomi was going insanely well. We picked up a Hydro Goblet and a healing bonus percent circlet, both with good substats. This is the piece. Please. Hit a lot of elemental mastery. Um, it's not the best, but it's not the end of the world. Dude, not a fucking bad piece at all. Dude, Kokomi Saucin for the queen. We want HP percent the most. Elemental mastery is not a completely dead roll. Come on, 14% HP, EM. Bro, honestly, dude, it's really not too bad. Pray we hit HP. Well, the flowers and feathers were hitting good rolls too. In just one day of strong boxing, we actually got C6 Kokomi, a very strong build. I was unbelievably happy with that. Hit EM and then hit ER. That's, that's good. HP. Yes. Do beautiful for Kokomi. Way better than flat attack. I'm cool with that piece. At the end of the day, I knew we were on the cusp of having a sick Deepwood and Gilded build for Nahida, but it felt far off from being able to run Gilded on characters like Kaching or Fischl right now. <sighs> Homies, today was fun. Thank you for hanging out with me. I started up the stream two hours earlier than I normally do to farm for Roger all day. I was committed to making the biggest difference to Roger's account I could in this short amount of time. I knew on the second day we needed to continue to farm Gilded Deepwood, but we are now going to start strongboxing Thundering Fury. Thundering Fury is one of Kaching's best sets for Electro builds, as well as a strong two-piece set for herself and Fischl at the very worst. So with the plan of getting more strong Gilded and Deepwood pieces, while hopefully getting some amazing Thundering Fury pieces, is coming Kaching's way, we began day two. All right, let us see what we have in store for Roger's account today, baby. Starting off with defense. Okay, not a good start. Come on, bro. Homies, we got some double crit in here. With bad roll after bad roll after bad roll, please. Day two was not going well. Of course, we were getting good pieces every once in a while, but not at the same pace as yesterday. To make matters worse, the Thundering Fury Strongbox was going abysmally. Nothing noteworthy to speak of after feeding hundreds of artifacts into it. Here we go. Dropping a max one. Hmm. Okay. HP Goblet. Nice. 
Hey, that's potential. That one sucks. Oh my god. I am trying to make this Kaching not physical anymore. And then they give me a physical damage goblet on Thunder and Fury. That's just rude. Anything that had a semblance of hope, well. Man, this could like still be decent. Off. Push. By the way, people, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. My biggest goal in 2023 was to hit 50K subs by the end of the year. And I think we could do it. Subscribe to help your boy out. All right, I'm on Copium. I'm coping. I'm coping. <laughs> Give me something usable, man. Sheesh. It was starting to look like Kaching wasn't going to have her flashy new electro build that I couldn't wait to show off to Roger and the stream. It's seeming a little bit Jover. I was not going to let that happen. Kaching was the character most in need of a revamp. Physical Kaching in 2023, I can't handle it. This is one of Roger's favorite characters who I am confident will become twice as potent as she is now with a brand new build. So I woke up early the next day, booted up Genshin, this is all off stream and farmed and farmed and farmed. I carefully went through Roger's artifacts, everything he had from every set I could possibly think of, scrounging around for any piece that had a chance to make Kaching shine. Leveling up pieces, giving up. Leveling up more, throwing them away. But after hours of working at it, she was done. So with over 6,000 resin spent on Roger's account, it is time to reveal all the builds that we've worked so hard on. We are going to go first and foremost with the Raiden National Squad. We have almost 300 Elemental Mastery with 210 energy recharge. Those are both extremely high benchmarks to hit on Shangling. Shangling is now on the catch. The catch gives 12% extra to the burst. Shangling is on four piece emblem. This is an unbelievably consistent Shangling. I think she's a lot better than the Shangling we had prior. We still have Xing on emblem. We have him on Sacrificial Sword. Great option for him. I did get his crit rate up at the cost of the crit damage. To be honest, I think it was probably a necessary evil. Bennett is the same. I will be completely honest. I just leveled up some of his pieces. He has a ton of energy recharge. 47% crit on Fav is more than enough to get those particles flowing. We have moved her to Skyward Spine, which gives 8% bonus crit, a lot of energy recharge, really high base attack. It is surprisingly a very comparable weapon to the catch. Shangling uses the catch extremely well. Raiden uses Skyward Spine extremely well, and it doesn't go the other way around. You may see Skyward Spine is level 80. Roger, you got some homework to do, bro. So I am super happy to see this Raiden Shogun at 75% crit with a perfect crit ratio with crit damage a ton of er everything she's doing very 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 well uh i'm, I'm super happy with ryan show it is time to get into some of the biggest hardest hitting ones that we have on the account let's go to coke me the c6 queen the crown jewel who if you remember had nothing on her he didn't have anything to make c6 kokumi shine that's where your boy comes into play we are on everlasting moon glow We've got her a full set on Ocean Hued Clam HP Sands with 15% energy recharge. On Ocean Hued, Hydro Damage Goblet, 14% HP, and an Elemental Mastery roll hit. Goddamn, this piece is lit. And then another absolute banger on the circlet, healing bonus that is Kokomi's number one DPS stat to have with 10% HP, 10% ER, all the rest of the hits in the Elemental Mastery. Dude, Look, coming from my own Kogmi, I am so proud of this. Four-piece Ocean Hued, all the right DPS, great rolls. This Kogmi is ready to fuck you up. Time to show the Yalon. Boom, baby. 71% crit. More than enough for Fav. Consistently, 145 crit damage and 204 energy recharge. 38k HP. 38k, bro.
Now, not as hype as the others. Check it. We've got sack frags. Once again, my dude Roger is gonna have to go get some more chaos cores so we can get the sack frags to 90. We are on max EM. She's on five piece spirit essence. She's ready to go, baby. And finally, the princessin. She is starting from the absolute bottom. And check it, stringless R4. Fischl loves two piece, two piece. You don't have to get fancy with Fischl. She's not picky. So now, boom, baby, 67 crit with 151 crit damage. This Fischl is actually godlike, okay? She's holding stringless. That does not give crit rate or crit damage at all. So she is just straight up getting all these raw stats from the artifacts. Look at this fire piece we got for my dude. And then another absolute banger we got for Roger. An almost 40 crit value electro damage goblet. All I know is I don't have a goblet like this on my account, goddamn. Next up is Ayaka Freeze. And as you guys know, we didn't get enough time to actually put pieces into the Blizzard Share strong box, but I think I've got a big upgrade for this Ayaka team. We didn't even have enough pieces for one great Mirror Destin Venera set, but now we've got Venti on the other stringless on four piece Viridescent Venera on max EM. EM, EM, EM. And now Diona. I have her on two piece tenacity, two piece healing bonus. I think we'd love to be on four piece Noblesse uh, in the future, but she's got bigger heals, bigger shields, a ton of energy recharge, and is ready to go. It's time to reveal my dudes, Ayaka, who, if you remember, was actually really solid. But I did one big special thing that I think is going to make her even better. Look at this cryo damage goblin we rolled earlier today. God freaking damn. This is the secret sauce. Energy recharge sand. 19% crit damage, even has an attack percent roll on there. Now, if Roger or if you guys back home don't really like this, okay? Feel free to change it. Roger has this piece right here. Our homie's got the option to switch between the two. It's time. Lady Kaching, who was running the physical build. I'm just gonna say it, yuck. I was working on this Kaching for hours today before the stream, and I finally got her to a place where I am happy with her. First things first, she's on Lion's Roar, R5, but it is level 70. Roger, I need you to go out there and farm these mats. We got her on four piece gilded which is a great artifact set for her the thundering fury you guys know if you guys were here yesterday it didn't work out the strong box was absolutely destroying us so four piece gilded gives her a lot of good stats that she likes Whew. let's reveal the kaching 59 percent crit now when kaching uses her burst she gets 15 percent bonus crit so we are at about 74 percent crit rate when she has played well 168 crit damage and 159 elemental mastery so she's got a nice little mix and bonus of everything i can promise you this kaching is a lot better than the physical one that my dude was rocking i know this kaching is not perfect but i think in just two days all the fragile resin that i've been using on all the other characters too i gotta say i'm pretty proud of this kaching i saved nahida for last this Nahida is an absolute monster. Looking at her before, she didn't have anything. Our dude didn't have any deep wood pieces at all. We are rocking Wid Sith Nahida on four piece deep wood. A Dendro damage goblet on set, baby, on set. Now, yes, it has 79 defense. Shut up, chat, okay? This shit is really Freaking good still. Now look at the sands, baby. Elemental mastery on deep wood, 14% crit rate. Absolute juicer of a piece. Happy that we got some good feathers. Juicy freaking flower, bro. This flower has 42.7 crit value. Now look, I know a lot of people build the elemental mastery stacking Nahida, okay? I want the best of both worlds. I want a ton of EM and good crit stat. That's what Nikita deserves, okay? She's been through enough from the goddamn academia, okay? She deserves it all. It is time for me to reveal the piece. People in the East Discord have heard the rumblings. 
of the artifact that I rolled on Roger's account this morning. I gotta turn my camera on for this. <laughs> we uh, might get a uh, 50, <laughs> 50 CV piece right now, please. Oh, <laughs> bro. An elemental mastery, 49.8 circlet, 42 crit damage. Holy freaking God, dude. Look at her stats. 500 elemental mastery, 52% crit rate. She gets bonus crit from her elemental mastery. This is arguably one of the best Nahidas I have ever seen. And my dude can even mix and match builds if he wants. If he wants to throw the Sacrificial Fragments on this Nahida after he gets it to 90, he's pushing almost 800 Elemental Mastery. There's nothing more I could really say about this Nahida. I am so absolutely happy. This is such a broken Nahida. So here it is, guys. All of these characters are all holding separate builds right now. They're not sharing any artifacts. They all started from the bottom and I can guarantee you all of these characters are Abyss 36 star ready, baby. Goddamn. Homies, that is going to do it for one of the coolest experiences and videos I've ever gotten to make on my channel, okay? Lads, look, let me be honest with you guys. It is my goal, it is me and my girlfriend's goal to hit 50,000 subs by the end of 2023. So homies, please subscribe here on YouTube. Come check out the stream as usual. Come hang out with these homies, okay? It's always a good time. Big shout outs to the patrons. 120, Sumi, Espangle, Poison Tongue Boy, Caldo, Cloudy, everyone else on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. You guys rock. I cannot wait to see you guys in the next Gadget video we're dropping. Homies, see you guys later. Bye everybody. Let's go.